CYC is a free channel that presents the Word of God for everyone. Your support will help us to continue the mission. Visit our website, cycnow.com. Even a dollar will make a difference. Welcome to another show of Mythbuster Noah's Ark. Many have tried to use science to prove Bible. And sometimes it's very hard to use a biblical account and analyze it in a scientific manner and try to find out what's fault and what's right. One of the biblical accounts that a lot of apologists are working on and have worked on is Noah's story and Noah's Ark. Is it true? Did Noah exist? Did the Ark happen? Did the flood occur? How the animals went in? And many others. This is all written in Genesis, and as we may be reading in the episodes to come, we will read that um, the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. You shall take with you seven each of every clean animal, a male and his female, two each of the animals that are unclean, a male and his female. Also seven each of the birds of the air, male and female, to keep the species alive on the face of the earth. For after seven more days I will cause it to rain on the earth, forty days and forty nights. The worldwide flood encountered in Genesis is very difficult to explain since no one on th in this world have encountered a similar event. So all our accounts are based on biblical, geological, archaeological materials. The closest thing to a flood was the tsunami that occurred in 2004 and took with it over 227,000 souls, died not because of flood coming from rain, but a similar, a water flooding a whole country. We have several questions to tackle in this episode and the coming ones. The first question, was Noah intelligent enough to build that sort of a ship? Two, what type of an ark that can be that sizable and is the size compatible with the current measurements of today's ships? How did Noah manage to escort the animals inside? Four, how many animals actually we are talking about. Five. What happened to the sea creatures that cannot live in salty waters? Six. How much rain we are talking about that formed the flood? Seven. Is the flood global or regional? Eight. Is the flood magnitude what exactly we are talking about? And how much did it cover? What is the actual place of the ark? And where is it is rested? And what was the course of the ark? And finally, where is the ark? And is there excavations, geological evidence of its presence? Arthur Costanzi is a Canadian anthropologist who stated that building of such a large boat as the Ark in such a remote time of antiquity by so few people simply was not possible. At best, was highly unlikely. The first question that we need to handle today, was Noah intelligent enough to build this sizable Ark? As British writer Frederick Philby remarked in a book called The Flood Reconsidered that a survey of ancient world 
shows in fact that the very reverse is happening. That during the time of Noah, which could be 5,000 years before Christ, there was a lot of intelligent designs happened during that time. Take, for example, the Great Pyramid in Giza, Egypt. This is, was the work of the fourth dynasty of the pharaohs. Over two million blocks of stones, each weighing about two tons, its vast sides 756 feet long, all of this were built by the old Egyptian. The so-called Colossi of Memnon, again, these are very long times, probably the 18th dynasty of Egypt, cut from blocks of sandstone weighing over 400 tons each and were brought 600 miles to their present position to guard the entrance to the memorial temple of Amenhotep. Again, that behooves us to think that there were very intelligent designs happening during Noah's time. The closest of Rhodes was the statue of the Greek Titan Helios, erected in the city of Rhodes on the Greek island of Rhodes um, between 292 and 280 BC. It is considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Again, it was constructed hundreds of years before a very intelligent design. The Lighthouse of Alexandria, sometimes called the Pharaohs of Alexandria, and it was built between 280 and 247 BC on the coastal island of Alexandria in Egypt. The ziggurats, which were built by the Sumerians, Babylonians, and many others of their local regions. It was part of a temple complex which included other buildings. It was claimed to be built during the fourth millennium BC. There is also the hanging gardens of Babylon where one of the seven wonders of the, of the world reside and it's probably now in present Iraq. And many other wonders were built thousands of years before Christ. So we cannot claim that Noah cannot be that intelligent to build such a sizable ship. The second question, what type of size of that ark that we are talking about? Most critics really charge by saying the ark itself cannot be that sizable to contain those thousands of animals. We will come back to the numbers of animals in a later episode, but let us think about what type of size are we talking about. The scriptures provide us with dimensions of the vessel. God told Noah to make the length of the ark 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits, in Genesis 6.15. If we are to understand the size of the ark, we really need to understand first, what does it mean by a cubit? And the cubit is the distance between the index finger to the elbow. However, are we talking about the Jewish cubit, the Babylonian cubit, or the Pharaonic Egyptian cubit. The reason is, strangely enough, the cubit size vary. Vini defined the cubit as the part between the hand and the elbow joint. And basically, it's not from the wrist to the elbow, but rather, as I said, from the tip of the finger, middle finger to the elbow. In their book, Genesis, The Genesis Flood, John Whitcomb and Henry Morris thought that the Babylonian had a royal cubit of 19.8 inches, while the Egyptians 
had a longer and a shorter qubits. In one measurement was 20.65, while in a shorter qubit was 17.6 inches. While the Hebrews apparently had a long qubit of 20.4 inches. However, a common qubit of 17.5 inches was commonly quoted for the Hebrews. However, we need to be very careful because Moses, who is the one who wrote Genesis as part of the five books of Torah, was educated by the pharaohs, by the Egyptians. So more than likely, Moses, when he meant to speak about qubit, he was talking about the Egyptian pharaonic qubit. So according to the 20-inch measurement, the ark would have been measured 450 feet in length, 75 feet in width, and 45 feet in height. Just for you to imagine what is that size means, these measurements would have been over one and a half football fields. A lot of people criticize these measurements that that does not make sense. Strangely enough, even back at the time when Philby, the British writer, wrote, and as late as 1858, the largest known vessel of her type in the world was the P&O liner, Himalaya, 240 feet by 35 feet. A Dutchman, Johan Hubers, built a very similar to our ark, Noah's ark, in his homeland, Flooring. Hubert built the replica for Noah's ark, taking the exact measurements as we just mentioned. His replica was as long as 68 meters, three quarters of the length was almost of a football pitch. What Johann Hubers did, he made his ark as a site for visitors, and a lot of people would come and see the three decks and the main deck on the top, and then a lot of uh, artificial animals placed to see how a giraffe can be placed in the lower floor where its neck can go all the way to the third deck and so forth. In its three decks in Genesis 6.16, the total area of the ark approximately is 95,700 square feet. If you don't understand what is that equals to, it's the equivalent of 20 standard basketball courts sitting with each other. In 1844, an architect, designer, and an engineer by the name of Ismbard Brunel produced a very interesting design for a ship that was called the Great Britain. The dimensions, strangely, were 322 feet by 51 feet by 32 feet. This ship, strangely enough, was working with propellers and went across the Atlantic Sea in the 1844, around that time. And although he did not have a prior arc to build um, similar to, but these ratios and dimensions were very similar to Noah's arc. He later on, the same engineer in 1852, turned into a third ship, which he called it the Great Eastern, and it was measuring 700 feet long and capable of carrying over 4,000 passengers. Again, the reason of all what I'm trying to tell you, that the measurements of Genesis are very similar to a PO and PNO liner, similar to the Great Britain, and very similar to the 20th century's very large ships. The ratio that was given to us by Moses seems to be very accurate for that sizable ship. We only covered today two questions. Was, is it possible that Noah was intelligent enough to design such a ship? 
Of course, we answered it by saying, A, he was given all the measurements by God, the great designer. Two, there are a lot of many other designed designs that were fabricated in many places in the world around those thousands of, year, of the years BC, pyramids and many others. So it's not unusual to find that cleverness and great designers who could put together a great ship like this. The second, questions, second question we try to cover is the ratio of the measurements of the ark seem to be making sense? And the answer is again true, evident by older arcs or older ships. And if you look at the ratios of these liners with the ratios that were given by God to Moses, to uh, Noah, and written by Moses, you find that there is no much difference. And it seems that the measurements were correct. I will stop here and ask you to join me for another episode where we will try to tackle the number of animals. Was it really clean or unclean? Were they seven or two? How many animals are we talking about? How they were escorted inside? And many other questions. So see you again in another episode of Mythbuster and Noah's Ark. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.